What's up PC bros? Today we're gonna answer the question, what do you do if this happens? Your power supply may be bad, and if that's the case in today's video, we're gonna show you how to troubleshoot and how to replace it if you're buying a PC from PC bros and we send you a new power supply. It's really not as hard as you might think. Let's go ahead and open this up and show you guys how to diagnose first whether if a power supply is bad, then we'll show you how to replace it if that is the case. So this build right here is actually a perfectly fine working build, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna pretend that it doesn't work. So right now I have the power switch turned off, which by the way, that's one of the first things you guys should troubleshoot. You'd be surprised how many people forget to turn that switch on if your power supply has it. So obviously we're gonna pretend it doesn't work. We're gonna go ahead and first thing I like to do is kind of just do some basic looking over. Do you have any lights on the motherboard or anything? Do you have any lights in the graphics card? Like is anything working or no? Because if things are working such as your fans are spinning, your RAM lights on, more than likely your power supply is totally fine. You have a problem with your motherboard, CPU, RAM, GPU, could be all kinds of other things. Now, if you just have this, where you're getting nothing, you don't have any motherboard lights, you, there's a very good chance that it is either your power supply or your motherboard, but we're focusing on that power supply. So the first thing I'm gonna do is unplug this 24 pin. That is your main power for the whole entire system. So we're gonna go ahead and there's a little clip right here that you guys can see. You just basically push that and you gotta pull really hard. And what we have right here, this is called a 24 pin jumper. Basically, it has just two pins jumped, a ground, and then I believe one of the continuous power, and then that causes the power supply no matter what to turn on if it works, as long as you have the power switch flipped on. So what I'm gonna do, power switch is off right now in the power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. We're gonna flip this switch on, and in theory, this whole system should come on. Boom. So we have a system that is now turning on with the power supply. So this is usually a pretty good way to indicate that the power supply is perfectly fine and something else is your problem. Now obviously there is other things that could be bad. You could have a bad CPU four pin or eight pin. That's this guy up here. You could have a bad PCIe power. You could have a certain part of the 24 pin that's bad, but this typically rules out power supply every time. And also we actually do sell these 24 pin jumpers at PC Bros under our components and peripheral section. All right, so now we're just gonna pretend this power supply is bad. We gotta remove this power supply, and this is a pretty basic build. I mean, you got everything you could possibly need. So obviously, first things first, and I'm just gonna start from the beginning. You have your 20 plus four pin, or as we just call it these days, 24 pin, because you don't really just use 20 anymore. You're gonna go ahead and pull that out. That's your main power. Now, next up is your CPU eight pin. This is usually the hardest one to get to, guys, because this thing is just all the way up at the top, and if you have a radiator, I hate to say it, but that radiator usually has to come out. So as you can see, that is now out. That's our CPU power. That's a four plus four pin is what they call it. And then right here, this is our PCIe power. Some graphics cards don't have these at all. Some graphics cards use two of these, some use three, some just use a six pin where it's a, a six plus uh, two. So as you can see, we got that out and that's actually the best part about this is that's basically everything for the power supply to actually be able to come out now. But obviously in PC Bros fashion, we do cable manage our builds. So basically what you're gonna need to do is those connectors you just removed. So for example, a 24 pin, very obvious. It's a fat connector, but look at that. We got some zip ties holding her in. So the first thing I'm gonna do, by the way, you know, unplug your power supply too. The switch was turned off, but just for safety reasons. I really do recommend having these on hands. We call these snips. They're basically just like a close cut um, snipper that can cut through really strong things, even metals. And you wanna have that instead of scissors because if you accidentally get a little too a little too rambunctious and cut one of your cables, that just really sucks because then you might need to do some soldering or even have to replace components. So we're basically just gonna only snip the things that we absolutely have to, which honestly in our case could be everything, but we got our 24 pin out, easy enough. So now we need to get our CPU power. So we do have one up here. So just very carefully, I cut that one. We got one more here. Now every, every case guys is gonna be different and honestly, every person that builds a PC is gonna zip tie stuff differently. So it's your build might be totally different than this, but it's the same concept every time. There we go. All right, we got our CPU power out, get that untangled, and then we should just have our graphics card, PCIe, which is kind of in a weird, most cases don't have the power, uh, graphics card cut out, but this one does. And this should be out far enough. So now there's really only one step left, which is to actually unscrew the power supply. And then it is gonna be a little hard because yeah, a lot of cables in here that are gonna be kind of tied in with each other and they're gonna be a little difficult, but that's no big deal. So it's gonna take a pH2 Phillips. All right, so now basically most, and it's funny, a lot of people think the power supplies come out from the back. 99% of the time they do not. There are some cases where they have like a little removable tray, but typically, they're gonna come out through the power supply basement area from the back of the case like this. 
So yeah, like I said, guys, this part's gonna be a little bit tedious. I mean, there's a lot of cables in here, guys. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I'm gonna try to make this camera friendly. So we're gonna just gonna slowly get everything untangled. Now, if you don't have a modular power supply, this is a non-modular power supply. That means that all of the connectors come from this spot here and you can't remove them. I mean, you sure as heck could cut them, but it's not very safe. A modular power supply, you're gonna have a bunch of cables that you can actually connect and disconnect, which is nice. But in our case, we have a lot of extra cables, which as you can see, we kind of bunched together. We do have to unplug, it looks like a couple things here. So for one, Let's see, I think we probably have SATA. We're gonna have to undo this little bunch here. I'm guessing to power our fans, we have like a SATA or Molex connector. Let's see. Nope. In our uh, case. It is right here. <laughs> yeah, our case. We got a SATA connector, we got a disconnect. And look, now Boom. you know the power supply is totally out. So we're gonna pretend now that we're, all right, bad power supply, garbage. Here we go. New power supply, let's go. So now what we're gonna do, you wanna make sure your fan faces down 99% of the time. You see a dust filter down here, that definitely means our fan is gonna get face down so that all the heat and everything from the power supply is totally separate from the build. And then you really don't have to go through and like a lot of people will completely like just undo everything. You don't have to do that. I mean, your motherboard and all that stuff can still stay plugged in. Your graphics card can usually stay plugged in. All that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around. So normally how, how you do this, and this is I'm trying to, basically you just kind of hold it in from the back like that. Yeah, and you wanna use coarse thread screws for these. I mean, obviously if you have a build from us then you probably already have coarse thread screws, but very coarse thread, they have a very fat head and they even have these little guys in the bottom to kind of help them lock in place. All right, so now we're basically just gonna have to go through and plug everything back in. And for you guys, I'm gonna try to go step by step. So first, let's plug in that main power. We're gonna go ahead and put that through here. I'm gonna flip it around. And then remember, it's a 20 plus, plus four pin, so you wanna make sure that you get all the pins in. And you really have to use some force with this one. So right now it's in, but this would not turn on. So you really got it, there we go. So it should be totally flush. You shouldn't see it like sticking out or anything. And the lock should be locked. If it's sticking out, there's a good chance it's gonna come undone. Your system will randomly stop working. So next up, the hard part, the least favorite connector for all of us. It's the CPU power. Do not get that mixed up with the PCIe. The easiest way to tell the difference is that it's a six plus two pin. CPUs will always be four and four. Um, another way to tell is this just won't go in, but hey, I've seen people force them in. So this is CPU. We got a, a we have an eight pin plus a four pin. So we're gonna put that through the top here. And also 99% of the time, the PCI will be labeled PCIe, so. That's another really good indicator, actually. All right, so it'll only go in one way and you get a nice audible click. We know it's in there. You can even kind of tug on it too, just to really make sure. All right, and then we just need to run our cable for our graphics card, which uh, like I said, that can be ran through multiple different spots, but this Apivia Prodigy just so happens to have this little cutout, which can be very hard to get to once you have all these cables in here. Try not to take all the cables with it. There we go. All right, we got our eight pin through, and this that's what this power supply requires is an eight. And once again, nice, nice click sound. It'll go in there. You know it's not gonna come undone. Nice and clean. So at this point, we just have one more thing to plug in. Now, some cases, like if Matt and I, for example, we do a lot of custom builds on stream, we'll have a lot of RGB in some of these. So sometimes, we gotta use Molex connectors to power the fans and SATA connectors. This case is a lot more simple. It just has this tiny, that's what this guy right here is. This is a hub for the fans. And basically you just need to find the power, which is always gonna be like, it's even labeled power somewhere on here. So I see plus 12 volt. So here it is. There's our little SATA connectors. And you just plug it in like that. They should only go in one way. You can force it. I promise you'll see, uh, you'll see some smoke if you force it. So you don't wanna do that. Go ahead and stick that back to the power supply. And now for cable management, this is a step that is honestly not required, but it does help with airflow. It helps with lesser dust buildup when you don't have cables everywhere. So what I usually like to start with is I usually kind of shove the excess cables in the basement. So we mainly like to cable manage more towards the top, down towards the bottom, and then we like to just leave that cable bunch kind of open. And obviously you can use zip ties. I've seen a lot of people use bread ties like from sandwich bags, that works too. But basically, I like to make a few, what I call them like runs with the cables. So I'll usually do like um, two to three because usually your, your 24 pin and like your front panel connectors, that's these guys here, they all run down this side. Then your CPU and often a fan or two will run down this side. So that's, you can kind of see the vision here. Just get it, just get it. Basically just bunch as much stuff together as you can. So now what we're gonna do is go through 
snipper zip ties. And like I say, cable management's really up to the user on how much they wanna do. But I used about seven, eight zip ties on this, which I think is definitely good enough. And uh, how you can know if you actually got all these good, we're gonna go ahead and rotate all these so that they uh, allow the side panel to close a little easier. But how you'll know if you got it pretty decent is your side panel should go on fairly easy. So as you can see, we're gonna get it in place. Boom, and we slide it forward, it's pretty easy. Let's put our screws on. And then guys, we gotta see if this thing actually works. I mean, maybe I did just break it now. All right, so we plug in the power. We flip our switch to the on position. Often, you'll sometimes get some motherboard RGB. And then the system that. should turn on. Subscribe to PC Bros because we do have a lot of really good techniques and a lot of good tutorials on how to fix things, how to how to troubleshoot your PC, and obviously things like this, how to actually replace components and do upgrades. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.